here we go again. Here's another episode in the series of that series. It's coming together. It's getting better. Every episode is getting better. Enjoy the video. Passenger side back plate now. And I'm, the struggle I had with this the first time round was that the shoe, when it's positioned onto the slaves correctly, is actually tight up against the underside of the adjuster. You can see the adjuster here. Um, and to my mind, the adjuster's way too tall. Um, so I'm going to whiz it out and have a look and see what's going on here. Because something's not going, something's not right about it. Just taking the adjuster off. Silly boy. It wasn't very tight, I'll give it that. And I do thread lock these nuts in. So basically the way these adjuster replacements work, don't worry about this one being black by the way. I know it should be silver, and it is silver, it's just that I rattle canned it. Uh, right, there's two issues I can see. First and foremost, I can see that the adjuster has not been pushed down onto the pedestal properly. There's no way was that down far enough. So I doubt that was doing anything at all. This is rotating anti-clockwise to make it bigger. It's also as wobbly as fuck. I don't think that would be doing anything at all. Um, so again, I expect when I take this one off, I am going to find that the cam is not, or well, this one's tighter, the cam is probably not located properly onto the fixing. It's better than the other one, but I still expect to see the shoulder of the, the fixing bolt right at the top end of the cam, but this one's a lot better than the other one. Shows you in the book which way around the cam goes. Goes that way. So one of them was right, and one was wrong. Well, that's predictable, isn't it, Richard? Because, just because. Now, <clears throat> let's bung this back in now. We're just going to go over the top of that. We'll start again. Spring. Plate. Cam. Can't wait to see it, eh? Yes, that's right. Bolt. If this doesn't work, I'll change the bolt as well. So that's located. Is it going to work? I think it is. Because basically, when it goes on properly, that spring almost compresses completely down. That's got a big notch taken out of it as well. Now. That's rubbish. That's going in the recycle. Now, let's have a look. So, if I take it off now, should stay in place and it is as we know now when we look at it and you can see there the shoulder is up to the cam next we well, better thread lock on the bolt because this is probably going to come apart again if it does come apart again it's going to be with an angle grinder so I don't mind about thread locking this bastard in because it's going to stay in there this still actually fits in it now and of course it does. It sits down beautifully now, and it's, it's miles away from the head of the bolt. So that's all it needed, was these doing up properly. Um, two issues, first of all, I think that the washer was the wrong side, uh, and the other issue was that the bolt hadn't done and pulled the cam down tight enough. 
It's not difficult, folks. It really isn't. So I think these shoes have barely been used, um, but I'm going to go with this one being on this side because I've not taken the spring off it. So what I generally do is put the spring on to the post and then hook that end in there, take the seal off the slave and put it onto the shoe and then maneuver the bastard so it goes past the slave unit like that and then maneuver it again so it goes past the adjuster and pushes into the slot on the slave okay and then tap him up into position it's as fucking easy as that some people go on and on and on about what a ball's ache is putting these shoes on well did that look like a ball's ache to you i know that i've not got the the, the hub on and to be honest if i'm replacing the brakes I might be inclined to take the hub off and replace the seal because they always leak and this whole area will be full of oil. So there you go. You don't have to take the back plate or the, or the, or the come a stub axle off. Just take the hub off. Um, and there you go. That's one shoe on. And then what I do is I wind the adjuster so it's down to the minimum. That's the maximum. That is the minimum. Okay, and we can see that the head of the bolt is just clear of the shoe, but I've not put the adjuster bolts in yet. I haven't got the right bolts here. I've already got these shoulder bolts and they're not long enough in order to push the, the shoe up and away from the uh, from the back, back of the base plate, because I need this shoe to come out like this, you see. Right, let's get the other one on. Spring on first. Spring on post, shoe in, oh, I forgot to take the rubber off. If you don't take the rubber off, by the way, what actually happens is the end of the uh, shoe, the leading edge of the shoe, gets stuck on the rubber and doesn't actually seat onto the piston inside the caliper. So by doing it this way, you're guaranteeing that the piston will, sorry, that the shoe will seat onto the piston. to do is adjust that so that is now in there and in the slot fucking perfect that huh? fucking perfect right now I've got to make up new shoot I've got to make up new lines for this now it's exactly the same as the driver's side and we all know why don't we because the old ones were lethal so I'm gonna put the music on you don't need to watch anymore but that's pretty much how you put the shoes on um, and because this is the passenger side, that's the bottom because it's got the drain hole in it for the oil. It goes that way around on the passenger side and the top slave rubber points forwards towards the front of the car. Been having a bit of a major clear up in the workshop here. This is where um, my dad's car sat. Um, and the reason I'm having a major clear up is because it's kind of been through a fair number of restorations in the last year in this workshop. Look at the channel. Anything that's not happened in Devon has happened here. Um, and as a result of that, kind of, well, one of the things that happens is it doesn't matter how big your workshop is, um, the, the walls just start closing in on you. Um, so all of this lot down here is kind of crap, really, that needs sorting out. Down here I've got parts that need cataloguing and sorting out. Um, I've brought a whole ton of stuff back from Devon with me. Um, some of the stuff I'm going to get rid of because I just don't need it. I don't need to blast cabinets etc 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 and then I thought well this space in this corner here bearing in mind the doors are there this space here is completely wasted and this has basically been my junk store over here so I've cleared it all out even swept the floor see um, and then I'll bring the bench up that's down in Devon the big um, dressmaker's bench that I've got down there that I can stand on uh, because that will fit here quite neatly uh, but in the meantime I'll just use a couple of these uh, uh, scaffold boards. I've started, as you can see, panel up the wall. These are very kindly donated. A couple of these posts, and I really, really like them. I just popped some frames around them. Um, 
if you see there, Land Rover blueprints, Range Rover blueprints, very nice. And then when these things get shagged out, and they do, <laughs> these are very kindly donated by Dale, uh, I, I just, <laughs> okay, I'm going to panel the rest of the thing out, and I've got insulation and stuff to go in. Uh, but yeah, it just kind of keeps the draft down. And then the lighting on the roof here are actually photographic lights. Um, I'm on make film. A photographer gave me these. So a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. Right, what I'm doing here though, because this is all about the uh, Series 3, which is just going to get better and better and better, this car. So obviously I've got a steering box here, um, and really what I wanted to do was to get this thing I've obviously, it's been stripped down, there, there are ever so to get stripped down these things. The only bit you might struggle with is getting this top plate off. Um, and all I can suggest when you're doing this, can you see, are you, are you looking at what I'm looking at? You are. Um, when you get the top plate off, undo the bolts, and then wind the adjuster down. So you need to loosen the adjuster nut, and then wind the adjuster down, and it lifts the cover up. There's two big dowel pins on it, there and there. Uh, and what you'll find is that it will lift off one but not the other. Um, as is predictable, um, the thing, this, this, this thing has, uh, has seen a hard time. It's actually in very serviceable order. Um, one of the problems I had with it was there was not a drop of oil in there. Um, and because there wasn't a drop of oil in there, things like these, which the bearings run in on the front of the back, you can see that's really quite in quite poor condition. So I bought a complete rebuild kit. I know, but it does say country of origin, UK. All right, and that's the part number, DA1236. And this is a rebuild kit for any Series 3 steering box, blah, blah, blah. And it comes with gaskets. It comes with a new set of balls. Although I'm probably inclined to reuse the existing balls. I'm just double checking them at the moment. Um, I don't know how tough these are going to be. Um, and new braces which is the main thing I bought it for uh, new gaskets and that's all it really comes with it's not horrifically expensive and then the other thing I bought which I can't find I'll do a video on this because this will be exciting now what I watch this New beer mat, um, steering top mounting, which is the reason I took this whole thing apart in the first place. Um, there is a batch of them going to be made in the UK by beer mat, um, but uh, not available yet. I want to get on with this. So I'm going to try one of those cheaper bearings. Now, the shaft itself, dead easy. You've got the outer shaft and you've got the box. That goes on there, that goes on there, okay? goes that way up, so you've got the fill plug on the top, you've got the drop arm comes out of there, and the adjuster goes in the back there, and then down the middle of it all, you've got this whacking great big shaft, yeah, with a worm on the end of it, onto the worm goes this located, this, this fella here, okay, with the balls in it, and then you get bearings front and back. It is actually very, very, very straightforward. Very simple steering box. No reason why anyone couldn't take one of these apart. Um, oh, the other thing that comes in the kit, there's an O-ring underneath here. Okay, don't bother trying to take this ring out. You can get to the O-ring without doing that. Okay, uh, I'll just use a little thin uh, blade. In fact, there's the old one. Uh, the old one is quite stiff. Probably snap that. It's the old top mount. Right, now when it comes to bearings, because when you take the cover off thing, this thing and start pulling the shaft out, all of the bearings are going to go everywhere. So use yourself, um, your wife or your mum's best baking tray. Um, just slip it in the dishwasher afterwards, they won't know. <coughs> what are your dads? Let's not be sexist here, chaps. Let's not have chaps, chaps cool too. Right, um, you get two different sizes of bearing. You get these big bastards here, and you get these little ones here. Okay, these little ones, go on the end caps, either end. Uh, big bastards go around this little selector. On the end of the selector, you get the fork, goes on there like that, and then on the top of the fork goes that big fat washer. Having taken this all apart, what I'm really doing is looking to see how bad the ridging is on here. 
it's going to have some wear but it's not bad it didn't really have that bad a notchy feel when i took it apart the other thing i want to look at is to see because there's no bump stops on the front hubs predictably is whether there's any excessive wear where this thing's been running right up against the bump stops inside the steering box rather than using the bump stops on the axle which is not ideal there's no real damage on this thing i think that this shaft is more than serviceable um, which is why I think the balls are more than serviceable. Um, I might use the new small balls uh, for the end caps, and that's largely because of that damage you can see in there. Um, I've not looked over the, the small balls yet, but let's do that later on. So box was assembled. Haven't done the adjustment on the bottom end yet, so that's just a banal. Um, not the bush in really using one of the old um, bearing cups over the top just to acting as a shield um, to really to protect the top edge of the bearing you do flatten out the top edge of the bearing very 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 slightly in the last little bit so I just had to kind of just work this edge just to bring it back up again I don't know how else you could put it in I really don't um, the only thing I think, because I think however you're going to press that in, it's going to be difficult. And the reason I've got the steering wheel out is to just check the operation of the steering box. It's free and fluid throughout. And it is. And no fucking play. Nice, eh? <clears throat> and the only other thing I noticed when I was doing all this is the uh, steering wheel nut for some reason is looking quite distressed uh, it fits in the thread no problems at all there but uh, I say it fits in the thread anyway, it fits on the thread I might get another steering wheel nut well, that steering box is ready to go back on I can fill it up with oil <sighs> two hours Rear hub comes apart really easily on these things. It's just nuts and bolts and things. Take the back plate off intact. You can see the brake lines hanging down there. Uh, yeah, it wasn't tight. Um, drive shaft is over there with the drive plate still on it. I'll have all that all apart in a minute. The brakes at the back here. There's a lot of crap around the inside of this thing. Um, I'm not going to go anywhere near any of it until I've doused it down. Um, asbestos, 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 folks. Um, they were using it on classic cars until, I think it was until the 90s. Um, that one wants a damn good clean up. The hub itself isn't too bad. I think that's where the bulk of the oil has been coming from, though. Um, sorry, the, that's the stub axle. There's the hub. Uh, yeah, all that was okay. The only worrying thing I've got, that's all magnetic swarf, and that all came from inside the axle tube. Now, I'll see what the other side's like. But basically, it's, it's not uncommon when you take these things off apart to find a you know, pile of crap in there. Um, but when it's magnetic, I think you need to be a little bit more concerned. Let's, I pull this thing. Ah, oh, fucking thing. This has been doing that recently. If I pull this out and shove it a little bit further inside, <laughs> let's probe. And come out. Yeah, there's more of it. There's quite a lot in there. So I'll need to see what's going on the other side before I commit to removing the diff <clears throat> to find out what's going on because metallic swarf can only really have come from one place. Driver's side in much the same sort of state. A um, little bit of oil leaking onto the back plate, not as much as the passenger side. Uh, stub axle looks serviceable. You can get it cleaning up. Uh, interestingly, it was upside down, so the uh, the groove there wasn't pointing downwards. Uh, hub okay, no issues at all, apart from all the bolts were loose on the drive plate. And then that's what I found in the end of the stub axle. Now this kind of worries me a little bit more because these are some big lumps. Can't really see it there. Right, look at that. 
That is a big lump of metal there. I don't know what it is. Not insignificant. It could be a previous disaster. So I think the next step is going to be to um, probably drain the diff oil into a clean container and sift it. So a short while later, what have we got? Right, hub, happy with. Bearing, seats, happy with. Uh, bearings, I just need to give them a clean, just make sure they're okay. They're the same brand as everything else on here. Uh, the main reason for this thing coming apart is because I need to press new wheel studs in here for the wolf wheels. Um, the seal oh, 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 on the back are completely gone. That um, silver spring there, can you see that? Can you, can you hold that steady? Hold the camera up against it. You can see the spring, which should be encased in rubber, like that, as the inner lip. So that's the outer lip, there'll be an inner lip on this side. Um, yeah, it's more or less completely exposed. So that's torn itself apart on something. So then you start thinking, what's that torn itself apart on then? And then you look at the stub axle. Oh. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. I don't see how that's going to maintain a shaft. I'll give it a clean. I'll go over it with some very, very, very fine emery paper. And see if I can get that as a better surface. That was that. Brakes, fine. Uh, they do look like new shoes, but like seven years ago. Uh, back plate, fine. Cylinders also looked like they were new. Um, you can see the cross hatches in there and so forth, where they've been honed out. Um, but, again, we've got signs of debris in there. Not as much pitting on these as there was in the other ones, but again, you can see a very, very distinct line at the top there. I'm not going to fuck around. I'll replace them. Um, now, question, you serious chaps. Three of the hubs that I've taken apart so far have an O-ring at the bottom end of the stub. So the actual hub itself would go, let's put it on the right way around, would go on like that and there. So I can only think that this O-ring here is to cushion the wheel bearing. I don't understand it. I really do not understand why you would have an O-ring down there. So please, someone help me. I don't understand. It's not in the parts manual. One of them didn't have it at all. In fact, does this one have it? Two of them don't have it at all. It's one of the fronts, and now one of the backs didn't have that. We'll look at the back. Oh, sorry, that's the front hub. This is the rear hub. Again, the seal's in a fairly shock shocking state on the back of that. You can see where this is all oil up here, which has escaped. Um, so I think, and again, the stub axle's got quite a lot of pitting and rust on it. I'll have to go and see my machine shop chappy and see what we can do about it. It could well be that a twin, a quality twin-lipped seal will um, keep the hub oil out. Cleaned up all of the offside, the driver's side, back plate, that's the new um, wheel cylinder there, so ignore that. Back plate, very good, just clean the paint off the mating face. Uh, the stub axle is better just than the one on the passenger side, uh, but still, um, it's not great. The seal, oh, 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 on this side, sorry, that was a bit of an arf, wasn't it? Um, is more intact than the one that came off the passenger side, but um, it's still not great. These stub axles still are not great. I'm going to have a go at cleaning those up in a moment. I shall report back. Stub axles good. Rest of the bearings and the hub plate and everything, they're, they're, they're all good. Um, so I think the shoes are okay. The wheel cylinder on the side, driver's side, similar sort of shape. Obviously new, obviously sat with brake fluid in it for quite a long time. Um, and you can see the, the, the marks on the inside of it. So, the cost of a new cylinder is Delphi Lockheed. Um, I'll bung a new one on. Thank you very much. Uh, adjusters look okay on this. I will double check that they are working and that they clear the shoes. Um, they were on the 
passenger side one, but I didn't actually check properly on the driver side one before I took it apart. You have just you given as a second time I've said that. Um, so I think now the plan is to build up the brakes back on here with a new wheel cylinder, get it ready for whatever I'm going to do with the stub axles and they can go back on. Interestingly, the bleed nipple on the slave was done up tighter, <laughs> much tighter than the ferrule for the brake pipe. Yes. We know we've got challenges with the brakes, Richard. You don't have to go on about it every fucking time, do you? Really, honestly, there you go. Right. So, uh, again, again the, the, the challenge, um, sorry, the challenge, the, the, the objective now is to just get this thing built back up with um, a new quality slave, um, uh, brand new custom built brake pipes um, and probably existing shoes. I'll just double check those in the parts manual. So then, then I start looking at the wheel cylinder and thinking, well, when this came off, it didn't quite look right. So if we position that in, bear in mind this is the driver's side. I'm going to tripod you. Just one second. Yeah, there's me. <laughs> Tripoded. You are tripoded. Right, now let's lower you down. Sorry, folks. I'm going to have to clank, 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 clank. I know it clanks. I know, I know the rattles, the microphone's picking up the noises. I can't help it, folks. It just is one of those things. Right, now. Clank, 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 clank. There we are. Right. End of clanking. Right, so the wheel cylinder is on. Now, bearing in mind this is the driver's side. The bleed nipple goes at the top, and the brake pipe was then going down the front of the axle. And I don't seem to recall it being that way around, but then I get confused, don't I? Because it's been a while since I've touched a Series 3, and the last Series 3 I played around with was sanding, um, and that's a 1980 car, and there was a big changeover in July uh, 1980. So uh, the brakes on the back of the car pre-July, or pre-August 1980, were different, allegedly, from those on the back. Uh, uh, sorry, on uh, uh, post. Oh, fuck's sake, you've got to get this right in a minute, aren't you? In a nutshell... In the middle of 1980, regulators came in which basically said they wanted the front brakes to lock up before the back brakes. And this is why the short wheel base, which is prone to, prone to locking up all four at exactly the same time, if not the backs first, um, gained the twin leading shoe arrangement. Now, I'm not quite sure what happened at the back of the car, um, and also I was a little bit concerned about the way that this was all set up, and that cylinder then... So bear in mind that I'm working on the offside. I'm looking at the right side rear cylinder, 243296. Oh, yeah, that's the other way around. It's different. So the wheel cylinder has been put on the wrong side, I believe. So, so with that in mind, let us consult with the parts manual, which was here, not too much here it is. So first and foremost, let's look at the parts manual. So, at the beginning of the parts manual, you've got things like all of the symbols and so forth. So up here, we have got right-hand steering, which so the, shows the image with the steering wheel on the right-hand side of the car, i.e. right-hand steering when you're looking from the back of the vehicle or sitting in the driver's seat looking forwards. Okay, left-hand steering similarly. Right-hand is when you're looking from the back of the vehicle or sitting in the car looking forwards, and left-hand similarly. So left-hand is passenger side, right-hand is driver's side. That's my understanding. Correct me if I'm wrong on this. I'll happily, you know, I will happily take it on the chin. So then we go to section 1L and we look at brakes. So here we've got uh, the front 109, front 88 from July, the rear 109, front and rear 88 up until June 1980. So basically the front and the rear um, had this single cylinder um, with a, 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 a single leading shoe braking arrangement, okay? Um, and you've got lots of left and right symbols going on here, arrows pointing to the right, arrows pointing to the left, etc, etc, etc. Not worried about up until June 1980, because this car's 1982. So, we look at brakes, rear, 88 inch from July 1980. There's the wheel cylinder, there's the part number. So, the right hand, which would be the driver's side, offside UK, uh, when you're facing the car, will be 243296. The cylinder, 243296. So yeah, they put the cylinders on the wrong way round. Whoever did the work on this last. 
<laughs> Fucking gibbons. Never mind. Um, the rest of this thing is all fairly straightforward. Um, the brake, shoe, linings and so forth. It doesn't actually say anywhere in here what the um, what the width of the shoe is, but inch and a half. Anyone tell me whether the shoe, inch and a half shoes are right or wrong, then that would be helpful. And then you've got two springs. One spring holds the two bottom halves together, and the other spring uh, holds the top to the post. Now, the other interesting thing about this was that when I took it apart, the top spring was behind the shoe, and the bottom spring is behind the shoe, and I think that's the way it's supposed to be. Because that way it's pulling the tops of the shoe out, and the outside edges. I'll double check it and see if there's a better diagram than this one here. Um, because I can't trust, normally you would observe the way it was before you took it apart, and then put it back together again in exactly the same way. Um, however, I think on this particular vehicle, I'm kind of taking it all apart, and discounting everything. Um, and we'll see where it goes. Well, I don't know if these back plates have got a part number on them, but basically, driver's side, I'm looking at it with the adjuster on the leading shoe, which I think is right. Because as the wheel rotates this way, you want that shoe to go out, don't you, and grab top shoe, because the piston's up here, as I understand it. So that would make sense for me, is that the adjuster is on the leading shoe at the top. This is driver's side, right hand side, right hand side um, back plane. I think it makes sense. I shall make it up anyway. Make up, the, I'm not making up this shit, I'm making up the brake back plate now with all the parts on it. Um, and my son is currently stuck at Gatwick Airport, hoping to get on a flight to Geneva today to go skiing with his university and overnight Switzerland have decided that they don't want to allow people to have fun anymore. So that's not much fun is it? Now, so we've got the right cylinder I believe on the right back plate. Actually it would make sense, I just double check these back plates are correct before I go any further. But the trouble is there's no markings on them. I don't think there's any marking on the other one either. Oh my goodness, clatter, 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 clatter. The front one's actually had the part number stamped on, but you see I've written an end for near side on this one. Because that's where it came from. Mm -hmm.